what the hell is going on? I've just found out that the Tournament of Champions is in LA, not in Vegas. And it's in two months. Two months. They could have just put it at the end of the World Series in Vegas, but no. They were like, let's put it before the World Series in a different location. Like, do they want people to show up? I don't know if I can do it. It's so soon and it's so expensive. Um, we will have to see. Yeah, fuck that. We're going. First of all, thanks to everyone for the amazing feedback on my last video, it was really nice. And welcome to any new subscribers, I try to improve my content every video I make, so thanks for joining! So I've decided to go. Is it going to cost me every penny I own? Yes. But am I going to do it anyway? Why not? That's life. The thing is, if I cash the Tournament of Champions, it's pretty much going to pay for it anyway. And if I don't cash, I'll have a great time, meet some great people and get a tan. And besides, I've got a secret weapon, which I'm going to reveal later. So the plan for my travels, I will be flying from the UK on the 19th to LA. There is a $400 tournament on the Monday at the Commerce, so I'm just going to, I'm going to play this. It'll be a really good warm up for the Tournament of Champions, which is on Wednesday the 22nd. It's a three day event, see how long I'm in it for. Hopefully I can catch, but if not, that's fine. So I'm not going to go all the way to the States without going to Vegas. So at the weekend, I will fly over and look at playing one of the opening events in the WSOP. So there's a $500 freeze out on Wednesday the 29th. So I will play that one at the Horseshoe and very excited for that. Obviously, I'll be fitting in some sightseeing into LA and Vegas. Any suggestions, let me know. I want to try and go to like every casino there is. So I've got six weeks until I go. It's absolutely crazy how soon this is. But I love a plan. And I worked out a four phase plan that is going to make me ready. So keep watching to see this plan in action. Okay, so phase one of the plan is going to be to study, study, study as much as I can. I do have a job. Um, but yeah, we're going to be cramming in some study. Got my six week plan here. Um, basically, practicing most in every spot that I can <laughs> and there'll be a bit of varying as I practice them go on the trainer look at charts and stuff but I want to make sure I cover like deep stack short stack ICM situations because I haven't really done much work on ICM but now I've got Poker Academy they have some really good materials for looking into ICM and it just shows you like the craziness between what a spot would be at the start of a tournament and then what it would be with kind of 17% left of the field. So I'm going to do a couple of goes on the trainer. If anyone's interested after this, use my promo code POCKETPEG. You get discount, I get free money. It's a win-win. We will go for a bit of um, ICM here. So 17.5% left of the field, meaning we're close to the money here. So the strategy changes massively. Uh, we'll go all stacks and... Any position, anything, I don't care. It's on turbo. Okay, let's give it a go. So it's doing the betting for me. That's pretty easy. Easy fold there. But it's really good because then it shows you like your range that you would have raised here or the grey and then it just shows you like what you would call with, call the all in. Um, bear in mind these are symmetric stacks so everyone has the same amount of BBs. So small blind, big blind, this is something I've been trying to work on here. I'd probably just fold this, um, yeah, in ICM. Probably always fold this, I don't know. I don't know whether you would fold this without ICM. Probably still would, yeah, I still would. Um, let's have a look. So here's the dashboard, you've got the post-flop solver, the pre-flop and the tournament charts and there's just fucking loads of them. So yeah, it's still a pure fold, not pure fold, pretty much fold most of the time. So if they're a bit of a loose player, maybe cool, but it's pretty much still a fold, but here it's like not a, not a cool, not a cool at all. Um, but yeah, you can see the difference in ranges here. So this is a 50 big blind with no ICM and this is the 50 big blind with ICM. So there's less, there's less raising. So you've got 8.3% raising here. ICM you got 4.9% raising, a couple of all-ins. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know what ICM is, it just it's independent chip model and it basically takes into account what stage you are in the tournament. So this ICM I'm looking at is close to making the min cash, so the minimum amount you will make on a tournament. So it's really important to play tight, which is why you're folding queens here, which might seem crazy, but it's not. So 
there's not much raising in ICM when you're this this deep there. So I go for a call. Yeah, because there's only 6.9% raise. Ace five suit, I just call her. Oh, okay, you see. Ace five suit, we all know, is a very good um, bluff raiser. I guess, yeah, late position, small blind calls. Um, they're, they're capped to the best hands. You've got the ace blocker, it's definitely a good spot to shove here. Um, ace two, fold. Yeah. Like, this is pretty insane for ICM. So let's just get out of there. Sixes, let's give that a raise. Oh, okay. I thought that would be more of a pure raise, to be honest. Um, but you can fold that out sometimes. You get playing a little bit tighter. I guess you're expecting a lot of shoves from small blind, big blind. So, and you can't call it off in the end. So, interesting, interesting, very interesting. So again, I just call her. Yep. I feel like there might be some bluffing here. But I'd rather play it like it's a nice little hand to play. Yeah, so your bluff's coming from, yeah, this is what I was kind of thinking. Six five suited, likes a bit of a raise, but again, you're polarizing with your strong aces and your weak aces. Um, some other random shit as well. We do not call this. Nah, it's not strong enough. Get out of there. But yeah, it shows you what. Okay, so interesting, there's quite a lot of shoving going on here, 20%. There we go. I think that will do. So unfortunately, because it's so soon, we're not gonna have a massive entourage, but we're gonna have some entourage, and let's go meet them. Vegas, baby! <laughs> Hello! Welcome! My name is Will. Hello, I am Will. I am your brother. Oh yeah. And I am I am the OG pocket peg fan. Wow. What ma what makes you say that? Um I was the only one watching your videos when you posted yes. them first of all. You enjoy me in the US, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I'm well excited to come out to Vegas. <laughs> um You're a terrible interviewer. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? I'm very excited to see what Vegas is all about because ah. we've we've only ever seen it from the movies. So actually, mm -hmm. to sort of feel it, actually get into the Vegas vibe. Which is, bit? <laughs> which bit? <laughs> I was going to say which any... bit you're going to feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard there's some like buzzing fountains around. I'm also excited to see if I personally might be able to win some money. Maybe a maybe a bit of roulette, a bit of blackjack. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy for these games? <laughs> I'm gonna go and try and win, <laughs> and then with blackjack. Yeah. I don't know. Try and hit twenty-one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is your favourite poker hand, Will? <laughs> Probably a full house. No, I mean the hand they deal you. They watch it. So you're playing poker. You look down at two cards. What do you want to see? Oh, I see. Um, you should know what mine is. Your favourite's pocket jacks. Wrong. Pocket nines. Pocket nines, that was it. Why? It, they hit the most sets, which means they hit oh, so nine it's not, on the floor. Oh, like they're statistically a really good hand. No. There's something about so they them don't always win. There's something about them that's a bit magical. I think most poker players would back me up. I personally would prefer, like, if I got like Jack Queen. Yep. of the same suit. Jack Queen suited, they like call Jack it. Queen, yeah, Jack Queen suit. Yeah, because then you're not at the top of the pile, so you've got the idea of a run coming from down below as well, don't you? Yes, Whereas, like, so with, straight from like, below. Like with King Ace, yep. there's only one way to get a run on that. Someone would call that like, Ace King. So I would like a Jack what Queen. What suits? What's your favourite suit? Probably the clubs. The clubs. Okay, so any advice for pocket peg going forward, you know, table talk, things like that when I sit down at a table with a load of old American dudes? Sit down at the table and you could look someone dead in the eye and be like, are our, our aces high or low? It's like um, hustling them. Yeah, psyching yeah. them out. Yeah. Because you're going to sit down and they'll probably look at you and be like, oh, it's going to be an easy win. 
Yeah. So. I've seen her YouTube channel. Easy. Yeah. Easy win. Um, any suggestions on outfits or, you know, various signature looks that I should harbor? Like Roman slaves. <laughs> Like the outfits, like for some reason, like a big bunch of grapes. Ah. Okay, to mind. No, that reminds me of one time I sat next to a guy playing poker and he ordered two fruit salads. Not one, but two. Two, yeah, that's And pretty... it, you know what? It psyched me out. That's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. It's like that guy who came into your pub when you used My to work pub. in a pub. Yeah. Um, and he ordered, what was it, a pint of milk pint of and milk, a shot of... Shot of Malibu. Shot of Malibu. <laughs> and then drank it. So this was like in 10 in the morning on a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, so order that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that will go down well. No. All the adrenaline plus a pint of milk. <laughs> <laughs> a pint of milk. Yeah, milk's a bit gross a nowadays anyways, isn't it? Milk. Milk's gross nowadays. What do you mean? Well, you know when you're a kid, like you yeah. just like drink it by the bucket full. Oh yeah, so you mean just growing up, yeah, milk yeah. is not as nice. And well, I think not like, that just, milk has got worse. I think in general, well, I think milk has got worse. Oh, you think? Why yeah, but... are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this? So you think milk's got worse? <laughs> Basically, in it. terms of outfit-wise, oh yeah, anything, maybe a toga with some grapes. I think we should play a hand. And then whoever loses has to put $100 on red immediately, first night there. First night in Vegas, Yep. $100 on red. This is a very strange game of poker. We need to put some money on the table. Okay, have a look. Ooh. So here's the flop. Ooh. Mm. Okay, we reveal one card. Oh, oh, no one's got a pair yet. Oh, pair of tens. Okay, now Shit. we reveal the final card. <laughs> <laughs> I win! <laughs> so you were telling me before that you've got a secret weapon. <laughs> yes. So my secret weapon, I've never used my one time. A one time is something you can use when you've got one the, time one time <laughs> when you've got the disadvantage you say one time and your the magic card will come from space so for example daniel weeman daniel weeman who won the world series last year he was all in with jacks against queens against kings oh uses one time hits that jack on the flop wins the entire tournament eight million pounds whoa one time baby that's poker, baby. Right, fans, this is my other brother, Joe. He just had to be part of the vlog. Like, he'll feel left out. He's the youngest. So, Joe, um, any advice for Pocket Peg heading over to, to the just Vegas? Just poker, baby. Predictions? Please. Favorite poker hand? Um, quadruple aces. Quadru quadruple aces. Hi, Mum. Can you tell me what your favorite poker hand is? Well, my favourite pocket pair is pocket queens, obviously. Who are they? You got any good advice for me? Um, well, if it was me uh, and I was going all the way to LA or to Vegas, I would really have to think about when to hold them and when to fold them. Who's your favourite poker player? Kenny Rogers. <laughs> So phase three is to play as much as I can. Um, I'm going to play some live stuff. Dust or Dawn are doing a big cash game promo. So I might play some of that, even though I've never played cash before. So I'm going to play as much as I can play online. I had a good run in one tournament um, on a few days ago, on Monday, where I came 11th, um, only for 100 quid. Going through hand histories, painful but necessary. Like... There's so many things you learn from like looking back and looking at the mistakes you made, especially in the moment when you're tired, whatever. I've been looking back through this tournament and seeing where I went wrong in some of the spots. And the last one, well, as soon as I did it, I wasn't really happy about it. Under the gun or hijack opens, cut off flats. And I shoved with, um, and I shoved with ace 10 suited now off the big line. I don't think this is a good shove. Like it's a nice little hand, but you can just call and play a flop. 
but then it's, it's just not really a good shove candidate here like you want to be shoving with ace five suited get maybe a better ace to fold or go for something stronger like ace jack ace queen suited ace ten is kind of like that middle ground and i don't know why i did it and i'm not really very happy about it i don't think it's absolutely terrible and the thing is there was a 10 on the flop anyway so i probably would have got stacked um seven eight nine ten yeah could have hit that jack as well that would have given a split a choppy pot um yeah they had kings we'll call it the final table it was 11 so very close to the final table uh, so we want around 20 on the we want around 20 on the big blind so we'll order it this way and we want this one that's pretty good um, okay, so versus, so we'll go multi-way. My position, big blind. And we got open from the hijack, flat from the cut off. I'm in the big blind. What should I do? Okay, so there is some jam in this situation, which is slightly different because there's, I've got less big blinds in this, but probably should have just called and probably would call that in future. Things like this, I'd, yeah, without a doubt be shoving these. Um, and yeah, aces are a raise. It's a beautiful day to be in Birmingham. The sun is out, it's very windy. It's important I get a good pair of sunglasses. Let's go try some on. Here we go. Oh, only 290. It's not just our mental strength we're training, we are training our physical strength. Let's go hit that gym. Yeah.